tonight I'd like us to dedicate our meditation for the people who have died in the events of the past week. This is a traditional practice over in Thailand. It's based on the, the sense that when people have passed over, the only way you can get in touch with them is through the power of the mind, or what they call the current of the mind. And the best thing you can do for them is to send them a current of peace, a current of goodwill. hoping that they find a good rebirth. A lot of people have been asking recently about the whole issue of karma and how karma plays out and all this. And the Buddha discourages that kind of thinking in the sense of looking back to well, what karma do these people do that might cause them to die in this way. He said if you try to trace that back, you go crazy, because the issues of karma are so complex. The basic principle is simple. Whatever was done with a skillful intention gives us pleasant result. Whatever is done with an unskillful intention gives an un unpleasant result. And there's a certain kind of correspondence between an action, a particular type of unskillful action, and a particular type of unskillful result. But the precise details. Did these people do this act all together? Did they do it separately? Nobody can really trace back. What the Buddha did emphasize, though, was Given any situation, what is the most skillful thing we can do? That's where an emphasis should lie. And one thing we can do is we can help the world through our meditation. Many people think that sitting and closing your eyes like this is running away from the world, being irresponsible. But when you think about the energies that people are putting out in the world all the, every day, all the time, the world really needs people who are putting out peaceful energy. It's like the mind is a broadcast station. There are currents that go from the mind. And if we create a peaceful, steady, calming current, it has an effect on the world in ways that are hard to trace, but they're there. So we reflect on the, reflect on the fact that all of us born into the human race have unskillful karma. There's no need to wish ill to anyone, no matter what. And the best you can do in difficult circumstances is to figure out what's the most skillful thing to do right now. Not give in to your emotions, not give in to your fears, but to create a great and within your mind as skillful a state as possible, as calm and steady and mindful a state as possible, and then offer that to other people. It's one way of helping. And at this great distance, this is probably the best thing we can do right now. So as you're meditating, realize that it's not just for you that you're doing this. You want to do it well so it can be helpful to other people, too. Sometimes that's a way of giving you an incentive to be more careful about your meditation. We can often get sloppy. Think, well, it's just me, and I'm perfectly content with a sloppy meditation tonight so I can get over with it and get on to something else. But okay, what are you doing for other people, that kind of meditation? Not much. So it's a skill that's good not only for yourself, but for the people around you. And not just immediately physically around you, but what the Thais call your friends in aging, illness, and death, or your companions in aging, illness, and death. The general current of energy in the world requires as much calm, steady energy as possible. So this is what you're broadcasting right now. Make sure that you broadcast well. As John Munn once said, the, the only true goodness in the world is a goodness without any drawbacks, without any, any harm. And so many things that are good in one way tend to be harmful in another. But the practice of meditation, the practice of training the mind, is good all around. Good for ourselves and for the people around us. I was talking this evening to a woman in Lower Manhattan, and she was saying that it's been very heartwarming to see how New Yorkers, who well, we know the reputation for New Yorkers, she says they really seem to have come out of their old shells and showing kindness in all sorts of ways she would never have imagined.
That's the proper response to a disaster. Is to realize, one, that there are disasters are all over the world. But again, but it gives you an opportunity to do your best. The shame is that many times when opportunities like this pass, we get back to our normal ways of things. We don't tend to think about doing our best, doing our most skillful things. But that's what is really demanded of us all the time. This is one of the reasons we develop mindfulness, not just to be non-reactive, as they say, but to be mindful about what you're doing, what situation you're in, what's the most skillful thing to be doing right now. Keep that in mind, because the principles of karma are not the laws of karma are not traffic laws that apply only in certain places, only certain times. 4.30 to 6 p.m. on Thursdays, that kind of thing. It's a law that applies to all of our actions. So we want to remind ourselves to be skillful at all times, no matter what the situation, no matter how minor it may seem or how major it may seem. We've got the opportunity to do good, to act on skillful intentions. Not just good intentions, but intentions that are skillful as well. That requires work. It requires training. This is what we're doing right here. And it's important to keep that in mind at all times, no matter how ordinary or extraordinary the situation. That's a teaching that applies, applies everywhere. Because what you're doing right now is important, so be careful what you do.